We here at the Game and Saloon Rift Tracks always support any and all that are involved in the creation and distribution of any show we feature, and we'll encourage any of those watching to support the official release. Thank you, and enjoy the show. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Coming to you pre-recorded from our internet couch. This is the Gaming Zoom Drift Tracks for October 8th, 2016. We're your hosts, Spacebreaker2448. And wrap it up, Slon. We're back with more double because I... I don't... I'd have to seriously look to see when the next good break would be. And even then, I am not sure what to do. I mean, X8 seems like the obvious choice, but... Mm -hmm. It just premiered the week we're recording this. Yeah. But, yeah, we are moving into episodes 21 and 22 of Double This Week. The T Returns, a melody not intended for women, and the man who can't die. Well. Hmm. And as a note... Uh, when I said last week, uh, or was it an episode list, uh, Kamen Rider Style? That is actually, if you add an ER to Style, so it's Styler, or just an R, because there's an ER already in there, I'm dumb, nor me. If you add the R there, you have Kamen Rider Styler, which is Malice's fan-made writer. That he's oh. doing stuff for on his DeviantArt right now. Malice, for those wondering, was the guy running the Fruit Rider news on Tumblr, and is also running the Gamer Writer News on Tumblr. I believe that's the one he's running. He didn't run one for Drive or Ghost, I believe. Somebody else did Drive and Ghost on News on Tumblr. Hmm. He's got a crap ton of writer fanfiction stuff that is really good. I encourage you all to go read it. Like, essentially, think of the idea that I keep spouting out of, like, hey, why don't we rewrite Arc 5 to some extent? Mm -hmm. Like, take that idea and apply it to Gaim and insert your own characters that create all sorts of divergences after a while. And essentially go, like, week to week with Gaim and rewriting everything to a certain extent. But instead, it's focusing on your characters in, in within the realm of Gaim that eventually lead to the same conclusion of Gaim. Mm -hmm. If that sounds anything resembling sense. Mm. I'm going to assume I, not. Mm. I think so, but of course you've also told me about this before the yeah. show, so it's like, uh, I, I can't really answer. Okay. <laughs> Essentially, look up Comrade Dime True Heart on DeviantArt. It's a very, very long fanfiction read, but it focuses on his creative characters of a team of beat writers that are essentially in the world of Gaim as in, like, like go through the events of Gaim and because of their presence and their actions create divergences that converge back into events of Gaim but diverge out and all sorts of interesting stuff. It's interesting. It's an interesting read. And a very interesting experiment of going, all right, let's add in characters that mess with things and also let's see what we can do differently in Gaim with the characters. That's a good read. Like, early on, it could easily be a background story in Gaim and it not interrupt a single thing in the show. Very easily, this could be the story of a lower team on the card. But eventually, it, it starts becoming its own thing, so it's really cool. Anyway, double this week. Any thoughts going into double? Uh, no, except for we're not at the point where Harry's on the same page as everyone. So he's kind of a dick. No. Yeah. Yeah. I think he's just going to be a dick. Although I do love the one scene they keep in the opening, like, that's always going to be the opening from here on out, is him, like, like cutting off Chotaro and Akiko from a crime scene. <laughs> like, they keep that. No matter what point in the show you're in, from here on out, that's always a part of the opening where when I just have to go, that is not how Terry acts at this point. 
Like, I would think at some point they would reshoot a scene like that with Terry on their side. But I guess we're not going to reshoot those bits of the opening. Anyway, eh, you... It's not really needed anyhow. Yeah. <laughs> you ready to start? Yep. As always, links for the videos are in the description down below. We are watching the TV Nihon subs, so expect a little to the three second buffer but before the episode starts with the title card and all. And we're gonna get started here in three, two, one, go. So this will give me a chance to talk about the X8 episode properly. <laughs> the the most I can say is the opening sounds cool. It it's weird because it sounds very American to me. Like, it sounds very different than a lot of Japanese music I've heard from all sorts of other sources. Like, this sounds like an American pop song to start with. And oddly enough, we got the, like, the full, like, TV opening in good quality before the episode premiered. I'm not sure how, but it did. And hell, we didn't even get the opening this week. The opening was playing during the ending part of the episode this week. And it was nowhere near this quality. So this is a completely separate cut of the opening that we got. Or at least a completely separate version of the cut that's not from episode one. So I don't know where the fuck this came from. But yeah, the opening sounds good. Uh, the action looks nice. Because I've seen the action scenes in good and not like sideshow quality. Uh, as someone pointed out, the the suit acting for the X8 suit is probably the most animated it's ever been for a main rider in a while. And it's probably due to the fact that the suit is very unencumbered. Like, there's nothing really blocking anything in this suit. Nothing's very tight, or, like, you don't have, you got shoulder pads to worry about that you got to bump into, or other stuff. Like, they've always mass-shifted the driver as necessary, but, yeah, this is the most animated we've seen a main rider in a while. But I can't speak to anything else because no subs in the rest of the episode I've only seen in sideshow quality. <laughs> the Henshin does confirm we are getting eight writers because it does have the character selection thing show up. And we have three unknown portraits, which I assume will be updated when those writers debut at some point after like the first couple months. No word on when those writers are going to debut, but I assume some point afterwards. Uh, we got a slight tease of who Genmu might be, since he's the mo the only one we don't know who is. But that was the most we got, because I spotted one of the monsters holding Genmu's weapon. But that was it. And let's see. Oh, Brave is showing up next week. So we're rolling right into writer debuts off the bat. And it looks like for now, Brave is on X8 side. I think the only two people that are going to be like antagonistic are Genmu and Snipe. And I think Genmu is just outright antagonistic. For now, at least. It's a little hard to judge Genmu based off the Ghost, can the ghost crossover episode because it's a bad episode and you shouldn't write too much about the continuity of the show going in the, coming out of that episode, to be honest. Okay. I'm going to say this. So far, everything that Ghost has crossed over with is not in continuity. 
Yeah. So I think it's safe to say that's not in continuity. Yeah. I mean, the most you could say about that episode is that it takes place some point after episode one, because Genmu is active after episode one. Or at least X8 is active after episode one. Genmu has like, been active for a while, at least, from what it seems like. And considering those portraits are active, I assume X8, X8 is the last of the four to become active. Everyone else just kind of started at some point before uh, Emu got x aid Or Emu got the uh, Mighty Action X gas hat. Which, that's going to be very confusing that we have Genmu, a rider, and Emu is the name of the guy who is x aid Is that now Nagasawa? I swear that's now Nagasawa. No, it's not someone else. I, I thought that was her for a second. Where do I recognize her from? Wait, that's Aki's voice actor for 5Ds? <laughs> okay, she's Jasmine from Decker Ranger. That's where I recognize her from. Yep. <laughs> oh. Damn it. Now show for us the one interested. Only because you want to fucking have someone one up Terry. Well, that sounds bad. Uh, no wonder you're an incompetent cop. <laughs> well, is everyone going to be busting out the parkour today?
Should have just dropped it in there. <laughs> Well, mm-hmm. well, this is definitely a Ginber- Ginnerobuchi episode. <laughs> Getting all the fucking Dutch angles right now. It's too bad he's not been back to writer in, a, in quite some time. At least she'll have to apologize. To fair Terry, you probably weren't going to catch him in your state. Well, for something far. so big, the, that one's disappearing really quick. Yeah, especially with a busted up ankle like that. Also, where the fuck have you been this entire time? Exactly. <laughs> Can't just say weather. The cat has a goddamn driver. I think he's allowed to be brought wherever he damn well pleases. I don't think that's happening. Bam. Wow. Actually, it looks like they filmed that in Los Angeles. Probably not, but I give them credit for at least giving the illusion that 
you know, there is something else in the writer world outside of everything that happens in Japan. Yeah. You know, we fucking blew up the U.S. and fucking Gaim and no one gave two shits about that. <laughs> Sorry, you, little... that Nate, that was Nate there. <laughs> it's like, yeah, sure. And that's coming from the person who didn't look up this character to double check the actress that's attached to it and has now been spoiled. <laughs> you always say everything wrong. Philip knows that one from experience. <laughs> wow, I that's the acoustic psycho effect. I don't remember when all they used this song. I know they use it for the end of the show, but I didn't think they ever they didn't use it outside of the end of the show. which the acoustic version of Cyclone Effect is a stark difference from regular Cyclone Effect, if, the, if you're wondering. There's one more to the smile count, since we were just recording ARC-5. And uh, I think someone from Neo or Kratos who does the script does for sure that I keeps a count of that every time that word gets said in the show. I think we're in the 200s at this point. Wouldn't doubt it. I just love it that as a counting gag for someone who does up scripts for the show. As long as it don't turn into a drinking game, then we're fine. Yeah, that that you're you're not gonna be fine if you try that with Arc Five. The book's blank. They can't read it. <laughs> Why do they try to go read the book? <laughs> that is a good question. It's like, you guys know that book's blank, right? Of course, you suggested for them to split up. Also, you should never hunt a goal, hold a gun sideways. That, that's a terrible thing to do. Someone shadow in the middle of broad daylight. Uh huh. Like that's some damn good eyesight, or you're lying sack of shit. <laughs>
See, this is why you bring the cat to the office. So you can send him to go do stuff. Don't they just stop doing the split screen effect after a while? Mm, I think it more depends on whether or not they've got the extra time. Because I, I think there's some times where they don't have the extra time and they can't do it. But then I'm wanting to say even lighter episodes, they still do it. Yeah. Like I'm wanting to say after extreme, it's a lot more rare. If I'm yeah, remembering but, right. Yeah, because I also think they start using stream a lot there. Yeah. Like they do with all final forms. <laughs> eh, yeah, that was a top rope nothing to quote OSW. Well, <laughs> love how Shoder is the last one to know. Yep. Even though Philip made that extremely obvious. Just when to get a reaction out of her. <laughs> Isn't that a bit of a fucking mood breaker right there? <laughs> Yeah, with all this heavy shit, all, also karaoke, because I guess we're also doing that this week. Anyway, any thoughts before we move on? Uh, besides I'm loading the video, no. Well, boop -a -doop -a -doop -a -doo 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 -doo. by the way, X-Aid's also going to have its own Blu-ray little miniseries thing that may or may not be important. Probably not. Well, it's like, here's the other side of the X8 story. So I'm like, okay. Well, it might yeah. be then. Well, it, its description is super vague, so there's no real way of telling what the fuck's going on with it. Like, what I said is, I think, pretty much a good summary of the description of it is, it's just said to be the other side of the story of X8. What other side we're talking about here, I don't know. I mean, how we're one episode in X8, and we're we got nothing so far. So, uh. but let's get this rolling if you're ready. All right, starting up the next episode of Double here in three, two, one, go.
Yeah, you're not taking down museum girl. <laughs> She moves quick for having a banged up ankle. Yeah, no. <laughs> you say that a lot. But everyone like asks you questions. So I don't think anyone listens. No, it's not working. I think this is dividing more questions, man. I'm just giving it through time at the moment, seeing if there's anything interesting at the moment. Mm, doesn't look like it at the moment. And it looks like TSM made their comeback. Got a win, so yay! NA teams make good today. He had one loss, but we got two wins. Yeah. Maybe North America has the chance at winning the the championship this year. Doubt it. Yeah, probably be SKT back to back championships this year. He may not be the best detective in the world, but he's still a good detective. Mm -hmm. Hi, Shroud. Mm -hmm. Not.
Maybe if you didn't kill two people, possibly. <laughs> but because you killed two people, no. You crossed the line that no one should cross. Now you gotta pay for it. That's a dangerous promise, Shotaro. Mm -hmm. Somebody's playing a very dangerous game. That is still the fanciest police headquarters I've ever fucking seen. Oh, uh, Jesus. <laughs> Why the hell do they have a term? Why do they have a term for morning karaoke? Bam. 
Bam. Playing them all. Well, he's currently buried in rubble at the moment. Are they on the top floor? Mm -hmm. I don't think your back scratcher is going to help you out of the situation right now. Mm -hmm. Yep. The quietest engine ever. <laughs> You, you could be less of a dick about it.
That just that's just a dick move. Hey, you're yeah, not buried under rubble anymore. Well, I guess the person with the bigger stick is winning, gonna win for now. <laughs> Yeah, that's CGI. <laughs> yeah, I guess Terry has to have his CGI bike fight too. <laughs> Looks like Wally got himself a little upgrade. Hi, Shrad. Mm -hmm. Yeah, a big ass cannon. Big-ass laser cannon. Mm -hmm. Wait, this is a different acoustic version of Cyclone Effect. There's two of them? Oh, good God, dude, get over it. Well, you better be because here's your bill. That's what you get for agreeing it three times. Should have negotiated for twice. <laughs>
He's never going to be able to pay that off. <laughs> well, any thoughts on two episodes now that we're done? Mm. No. Mm. God, I forget Ghost Asia was airing at the same time as Double. Or Ghost Asia just now started airing. I think that's the first episode right there. Anyway, next week we got fucking American Idol shit. Yay. Also, the chick who sings WBX will be showing up in the episode as one of the judges. Which is kind of a rare thing for them to do. Don't think they've done it since. I mean, technically the guy who, sung, who sings Drive's theme song shows up in Rider, but that was before he sang that song because that's Eternal. Right. <laughs> He's also the one that sings, like, a number of Drive songs. Now that I think about it, because he also does Re-Ray, which is Drive's theme, and he also does uh shit. He does he does another song. I don't remember what it is. Yeah, he does the Yango song because he's also the voice of Yango. So he's gotten to play two evil writers. It's a bit of a record. As much yeah. as a record of, of that, as much as that can be a record. But anything else? Uh, that that's about as good of a record as the uh, number of times that decades gotten to play an antagonistic role. <sighs> to be fair, all of he gets <laughs> keeps getting shoved in terrible material. <laughs> Let, let's be honest, his good stuff was before decade went. Ball and went bonkers with the fucking uh, Showa stuff. Yeah. Yeah. And then the first, first half of Movie War 2010 and uh, everything from there. At least All Riders was a decent, could be a decent ending for Decade, but good lord, has he not been in anything good since then? I know. Because he's attached to two of the Superhero Tyson films, which are garbage. He's attached to the not that good anniversary wizard episodes which I don't even really know how those work into wizard's overall story outside of it gave us an excuse to have wizard get rid of infinity only for wizard to get back infinity in the following team up movie For those of you who have may watch Sengoku Movie Tyson and not watch those two episodes and wondered, wait, why does Wizard not bust out Infinity at any point in this movie until after he randomly picks up Infinity off his Sengoku counterpart? <laughs> Who's dead. Anyway, anything else? Uh, oh. No. Alright then, that'll do it for... Ramp it up, Slum. Now, yeah, Facebook 2448 saying good night, everybody. We'll see you in the next round of gaming soon, Rift Tracks. Peace out. Don't forget to check out the links on the top and the bottom and the other shows in the, in the annotations. Also, for those on the mobile, all the links are in the description below.